Hey everyone! I was going to make this a basics video, but I think the subject is going to take a bit more of learning than just a basics video. But let me just say, this is probably my favorite feature in a very long time, and it's undeniably useful. And just know that this is the first iteration of this feature, and there will be more coming. But for now, what is Jobs? No, not that guy. But I'm sure he would approve of this. Though what's more, simply you can just think of it as a queue system for phase fusion. There are two main things that this allows you to do. The first is to create a queue of videos you want to do a face swap of or any of the other many features that phase fusion now has in its arsenal, including lip syncs. Play it once, Sam, for old time's sake. Colorizing, age modification, and so much more. And the second thing, Though basically in addition to the first, is the ability to continue swapping more faces from the same video. So if you have two or more people in the video that you want to swap, you can have it set up so that after one swap is done, it automatically does the next face afterward. Sure, you can do this all manually, but it's so much nicer to have it all set up and then walk away from your computer and do something else. Like sleep. Sleep is good. So how do we do all of this? Let's open up Face Fusion and take a look. To start off, Jobs is a feature that is to be released in version 3.0, which is not yet available as of the release of this video, so everything I am showing you here is in the next developer version. But as you're watching this, it may or may not already be out. Though you'll probably see quite a few different additions from the previous release, we're only going to focus on the Jobs changes. This all takes place in the center column at the bottom, where you'll see it titled as UI Workflow. The first thing you should know is that the first option, Instant Runner, is the option that allows you to output anything the way you normally would have before this update. So it's not using jobs if you keep it on Instant Runner. Clicking on the dropdown where it says Instant Runner will show you two other options, Job Runner and Job Manager. It should be pretty obvious, but Job Runner is where you'll actually execute your jobs and Job Manager is where you'll spend most of the time setting up your jobs. Selecting Job Manager you'll be presented with more options. At first, it's set to Job Create, which will be the first thing you need to take care of. But here you can see all of the other options of which I'll get to one at a time. But starting with Job Create, this is where you actually create your entire job so that you can add all the steps to it and then eventually execute it. So very simply, name your job in the Job ID box to literally anything you want. But I'd stay away from special characters just in case. And then hit Apply. Automatically, you'll be switched over to Job Add Step, which is great as this will always be the next thing you need to do. From here on out, make sure that the job ID is always what you just named it and that you haven't switched to another one that you may have started creating. Now that you're on Job Add Step, this is where you simply start adding steps to your job. I'm going to go through this and make it the simplest job by having only two different face swaps so you can see how easy it can be. First, like always, we'll bring in our target and sources. Then, set up your swap the way you normally would for anything you've normally done in Face Fusion. Once you have everything set up the way you want it, make sure you're still on Job Add Step and on the same Job ID name and hit Apply. This has now added your first step to your job. You won't see any difference in the interface at this point. You'll only see a quick flash of the interface when you hit Apply. To make this somewhat worth it, we'll now bring in a different target and source. Now go through the same process of setting up the swap or whatever you want to do, and once again, hit apply. Now you have two steps in your job. Congratulations, you did it. I'm obviously keeping this simple for the video, but I've already done a job that had 122 steps in it, and it ran perfectly while I slept. So once you have the steps all set up the way you want in your job, click on the Job Action dropdown and select Job Submit. Again, making sure that you're still on the correct job ID first, then hit Apply. What this does is basically finalize your job that you created and sends it off to the runner so that it can be executed. With it now submitted, the job ID should say None. Unless for some reason you are working on another job ID that you've never submitted yet. Now, switch your UI workflow from Job Manager to Job Runner. This will now bring up another set of options. The easiest thing to do is see that you're on Job Run and that your job ID that you just submitted is there, and you can hit Start and you're off. Nothing else to do. 
Well, let's take a really quick look at what the other job actions are that are available. Job run all will do as it says and run all of your jobs that you've created that have not previously been run. Job retry is to try or attempt to run a job that you had previously run and had failed. Hopefully whatever issue you had is fixed when you use this. And job retry all is going to let you retry all previously failed run jobs. I'm guessing this will rarely be used, but it's an option just in case. Back to job run and again, making sure the correct job ID is chosen, hit start and the job with however many steps you created will begin. Have fun watching the steps one by one in the terminal or have more fun with your friends or family or just relaxing and maybe sleeping. With the basic job done, let's take a look at the other options available in the job manager. Again, create a new job with a new job ID first. This time I'm going to bring in a target that has multiple people in it. The first step is going to be no different from before. Make sure you have the correct face selected for the source you're using. Make sure you're on add step and the correct job ID and click on apply. Now with the first face taken care of, go ahead and set up everything for the next face as you normally would. Once you've done that, if you were to just hit apply again while still on add step, you'd have two video outputs with only one face swapped in each video. Most likely that's not what you wanted. Instead, with the second swap setup, switch it from add step to remix step. You'll now have an additional option below for step index. For now, as you've only created the one step, you'll only see the one step there named zero. Every step you create is given a number starting from zero. With the second phase still set up for swap the way you want it, and with the correct step index number chosen, which only the one is currently available, click on apply. What this is going to do is take the output from step zero, which was a swap of the first face you selected, and then bring the output of it back in to remix it and do the second face swap. You'll also see that once you'd hit apply, that the step index changed to one instead of zero, as there are now two steps available, zero and one. Again, keeping this super simple with only two steps, choose job submit from the job action dropdown, and with the correct job ID selected, hit apply. Switch to the job runner. It should be set to job run and your newest job ID that you just submitted and go ahead and hit start. Soon, depending on your project, you should have both a video with the single swap from the first step and a second video with both swaps using the previous swapped output. And those are really the main things that are needed in order to make full use of the jobs feature. And I just realized I did something I shouldn't have. The video has two people in it, but they don't show up until later. So I thought I'd be smart and trim the first half of it so that it didn't need to do the full output. The problem is that I kept the trim set to the same frame for the remix, which means that because I had it set to a specific frame, it wouldn't start swapping the face of the first output until that frame, leaving me with a very weird result. So it probably would be easiest to just not do trimming at all on a clip you plan to remix. Before I get to the other options in the job manager, I want to make a couple of recommendations or basically give out a couple of tips. Personally, I prefer to name my output files each time. This becomes much more useful when adding a lot of outputs to a single job, but there can be one big problem with this. And that is if you forget to change the name between each step. Thankfully, if you don't, you won't lose the video you wanted. It won't be overwritten by the subsequent video with the same name. Instead, the videos will be combined as one playing after the other. Not ideal, but better than losing the video if it was a long process. So be careful. The other thing I would do with jobs is take good notes, especially if you're doing more than a few steps. Make a list starting with zero and with sequential numbers going down the list, write in what each step is and does. If you're doing as I do and naming each of the outputs, this will make it easier to write in what each step is. The main reason for doing this is that if you ever have to remix, remove, or insert a step to an earlier step that isn't the previous step, you could accidentally choose the wrong step and mess everything up. So keep track of what each step is that you have created. With that in mind, 
Let's take a look at what the three remaining options are in the job manager. The first is very simple, job delete. This will allow you to delete literally any previously created job. The reason for this is mostly just to keep things clean or maybe you realized one you'd made won't work for some reason. Whatever your reasons, this option is here. Next is insert step. It's the same as add step, but if for some reason you need or want to add a step at a specific place in the job queue, this is where you do it. With insert step selected, you'll have the additional option with the step index, just like with the remix step. But instead of remixing the step that is at that step number, you'll be adding a step at the number you choose and pushing all the numbers after it one step further back in the queue. And the final option is remove step. It's set up the same way as remix and insert. But here, you're choosing the step you'd previously added that you want to remove. Maybe you didn't like the source you were using in the swap. Well, now you can remove that step and then maybe do an insert step with the new source you prefer. One thing I may not have mentioned that I want to make sure is very clear. Jobs can be used to create any combination of steps with all of the features of FaceFusion. So you can have steps with swaps, swaps and enhancements, just enhancements, lip syncs, lip syncs with any of the aforementioned, colorizing, age modifications, face debugging, expression restoring, face edits, and whatever else Henry decides to add in the future. And these can be mixed up in any order to your liking and as many times as you want. Oh, and that does remind me of something else. This is super important. All outputs are temporary files until the job completes. If the job fails at any point, all outputs that were successful before the failure will be lost. Just remember that this is still an early version of the feature and more functionality will be added to improve and fix things. There's one more thing I'd like to go over that could become very useful, but I consider it a bit more niche. Every single job you create is in its own JSON file. If you don't know what a JSON file is, well, it doesn't really matter, but just know that a text file of some sort is created that holds all of the information for every single step you create in a job. So first, where are these files? As long as you did a normal install, the FaceFusion directory should be in your home directory. Open that up. Then there are multiple hidden folders, including one titled Jobs. On a Mac, hit Command plus Shift plus period, and all hidden folders will be revealed on your Mac. And it's the same to undo that. I'm not sure about the situation on Windows and Linux. I'm sure it's a simple Brave search away or chat GPT or whatever, just not Google. With the Jobs folder revealed, open it up. Inside, you'll see folders for completed, drafted, failed, and queued. Drafted are jobs you have not yet submitted. Queued are jobs you have submitted and not yet run. Completed are jobs you've successfully run, and failed are for jobs you've unsuccessfully run for whatever reason. Before you ask, all of the UI dash date and time files are instant runner jobs. So any of the regular face fusion usages are saved there also. So what's so nice about this? You can literally drag and drop any of those files and put them into any of the other folders and they will be back to that folder status. So if you submitted a job, but then realized you wanted to add some more steps to it, you can easily drag and drop it into the drafted folder, restart face fusion, and it will be back in the job manager ready to be added to or edited. Or you could literally just delete any of them so that you don't have to use the job delete function to clean things up. The other thing that's great is that you can open up any single one of these files in a text editor and fix or change anything you want in there. I'm not going to teach you how to do that as you can mess up your jobs, but it should be pretty straightforward. But maybe you have a failed job because the directory of a source changed. It's simple enough to go into that JSON file and just change the directory wherever you need to instead of starting over with the whole job. Or maybe you're creating a job where you're using the same target over and over and just changing the source. Well, create one step and then just copy and paste over and over in the JSON file and change the source file however many times instead of creating all of those steps in the UI. Just remember that you will need to restart FaceFusion to load any of the manual JSON changes. I'm sure there are many other examples of good uses for this, but I'll let you figure those out on your own. 
and please feel free to share those in the comments below. So what do you think of the new jobs feature? Are you going to use it a lot? Are you going to use it to change the entire cast of a movie in one go? I'd recommend against doing an entire movie and maybe break it into shorter clips. I've already learned to make great use of this feature. I've used it a ton and as I'd stated, I'd already had a successful 122 step job that worked perfectly. Here's my giant 377 kilobyte JSON. This thing seems to scroll forever. Anyway, I appreciate you watching this to the end. As always, it would help a great deal if you would like and subscribe. Leave a comment about how you plan on using this new feature. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.